Hi, everyone. There we go. Here we are. Welcome, YOM world, particularly your European leaders who are part of a learning community, because this is what it is, our European leadership learning community. We have another month of articles and I was about to say TED Talks, but that's not what we call it. Uh, copyright issues, I guess. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but with us today, our topic for this month is mobilization and vision casting. And if YOM is supposed to be about something, it is mobilization and, and vision casting. So an extra welcome to all of you who are watching this live or later. So I'm U1, if you can't read it on the screen and pronounce it properly. If you can't pronounce properly, don't worry. No one does, except basically the Swedes, so no pressures. But Lawrence is with me too today, and yeah, so good to have you guys here. And Lawrence, why don't you invite or introduce our speaker for today? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be with you today. And um, yeah, I'm going to introduce Randy a little bit. I don't know her personally, but when I was reading the bio, I was like really getting excited to hear what she was going to say and share with us. Um, so she is leading the base in Alsun with her husband. And she is a mother of a little son, and she has another baby due to April. So um, she's already very busy with the family. But they also have uh, the vision, you know, for the base to be a blessing for the city. And I really like this perspective of thinking about the base as serving the community and not just focusing on what's going on in the base, but also like to really working and partnership with the community. So they're working with youth, with artists, they're having uh, big DTSs too. And they also work with the um, YOM uh, ship uh, in the Pap I don't know how to say it, Papa New Guinea, right? <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. So, so Randy, maybe, um, yeah, why, why don't you talk a bit more about your journey in YOM so we get to know you a bit more? Yeah. Hi, thank you, guys. Yes, so my name is Randi. I'm from Norway. Uh, I started my YOM journey in Townsville in 2015. So it's not too long ago. Uh, I came to a crossroad in my life where I just knew that if I don't make uh, a decision to figure out more of who is God in my life, who is he, and it, is it possible to have a personal relationship to him? I know, I'm not actually not sure if I will ever, ever do it. So I was... 27 years old and really like on a search for the meaning of life and even though I grew up in a Christian home I was so not sure if I could have a personal relationship with God so I heard about DTSs and yeah long story short I decided to travel to Australia because I uh, thought if this is just totally crazy then I'm far away from Norway far away from everyone but then at least I will try to see is it per possible to get a personal relationship to God? And to be honest, it changed my life completely. I've been in YOM since, and I think there's many ways you can get to know God and he can become personal in your life. And for me, it was through YOM. Uh, so I, yeah, it's been an incredible journey to go from not really sure if God is real and personal and care about me to now suddenly lead a base I would never ever imagine to be where I am today, uh, yeah, in 2015. But uh, it's been amazing. So we, uh, yeah, I, I I traveled a single to Australia, did my DTS. It was challenging, but so so worth it. And I really believe what a DTS and discipleship training school can do to a person. Mm. Uh, so. Yeah, I was healed and transformed and new, a new creation. I totally understand what that means now. So I stayed in YWAM because I knew I needed to grow. I needed to be in a healthy environment with Christian people. So I actually just uh, felt like I'm here to grow. So I'm just going to stick to the space. Uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, allow myself to be uh, stretched and grow. Because uh, I don't, I feel like I've wasted so much time in my life, and I want to get the most out of this. So, I signed mm -hmm. up for two years on staff, and I got so many opportunities to 
leadership to yeah, different things um, and got close to some of the leaders there that really had a good mentorship uh, with me. Uh, so I ended up leading uh, medical teams to Papua New Guinea because this was a base in Townsville where they have wire medical ships. And since I'm, my background is nursing, uh, that was definitely a passion to use that and uh, bring students and teams uh, out there. So it was amazing. It was so stretching and I knew the whole time when I'm here, I'm here to grow, to land. But I had no clue for how long I was going to be there. I was just there until, yeah, how long God wanted me to be there. Mm. Uh, so uh, I was a bit surprised that in 2018, I got it, uh, then actually, by then I met my now husband, uh, Jan Oskar. He was the captain on the boat. And we ended up actually doing the same DTSs, but being separate uh, most of the time since it was a pretty big school. But uh, in 2018, we ended up being on the leadership team together on the boat. And um, yeah, romance is starting. We fell in love and we became a couple. But uh, uh, during that dating time, we actually got um, challenged to take on the leadership of the base here in Norway. So. That came really out of the blue, and uh, we didn't ever expect that. Both of us thought we were going to be in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, mm -hmm. But we traveled to Norway in 2018 to see, after we got married, to see if this was something. And yeah, in 2019, we felt this is right, and we, sh we should take on this. And we've been in Norway since, uh, but then traveling to Papua New Guinea working on the boat and being engaged and in relationship with Townsville in Australia still, but mm. uh, running the base here in Norway. So it's, uh, I feel like sometimes it's like, wow, it's so much that have happened in such a short time, but it feels so right, like each step and uh, where we are today and how we can invest mm. in our own people, but then bring them out to be a blessing. So, mm. yeah, mm. so it's really a, uh, fun to follow Jesus and to see where he brings you and it goes beyond my imagination I had I thought I had dreams but I realized it wasn't like dreams that can bring me further to fly with God and I feel mm. like really privileged that he brought me where I am today and that I get to do this together with my husband yeah oh wow thank you Randy this is uh, so good to hear life with God is a um... It's fun, as you said. It's really intense too, and yeah. uh, with many surprises, especially with God and with where you am. Thank you so much for sharing a bit of your journey. So the, the the theme of this of this month is about vision casting, and so my first questions to you will be like: uh, Do you think there are specific criteria for vision to be a good vision? Yeah, I think so. Uh, from uh, my time in Townsville, I did a leadership training there and we learned a little bit about uh, vision. And also I was around a lot of visionary leaders that I could see how they, uh, how that looked like. And I think what I have picked up, I feel like a vision should be like a, that uh, the leaders are painting a picture for what's going to come in the future. Um, that is, is inspiring the people that are working with them to, um, yeah, yeah, to do something that is bigger than themselves mm -hmm. and, and not um, something you can do on your own as God always have bigger things. Uh, but in general, vision should be outward focused and not just for yourself and should be measurable and specific so you can actually reach it. Um, mm -hmm. But it should be something you haven't actually come to yet, and you're going to work towards it all the time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Really so, could you on that? How how has it been for you taking on? As you said, fairly fresh in YWAM. I mean, yeah. it depends on who you're asking. The average yeah. lifetime in YWAM, I think, is two and a half years. Um, yeah. So you're on year seven of what it is now. But coming in to a to a campus and taking on leadership, like how how was the process of getting that vision? And where does that vision come from? Did you have, have did you get a really clear right before this is where we're going, or 
Is there something yeah. that's happening right now? It's, it's building, you know, like, how does that look for you guys in Olesund? Olesund? Yeah. Olesund? Yeah. <laughs> oh, listen, that was great. Uh, actually, even though for us, we have just been here since 2019, the vision for this place has, and for this space has been, uh, or yeah, the work here has been here since 1994. So mm. it's uh, been here many years, even though we are mm -hmm. fresh. Uh, yeah. And I think what is very important and what is to, uh, to honor what has been in the past and to... Oh, that's uh, good. To actually, um, there's been visions and um, steps, and there's been so many people creating this vision over so many years, and we are mm -hmm. like one brick of the puzzle. So, for us coming to Olesen, it was and it was very important to understand what we came to and what has been spoken here, mm -hmm. and what are the words that are still holding on that is unshakable, and what are the yeah. things that. Our God is saying, okay, it's time to move on. and Maybe it's a new season now. So we have a little bit of both where we have, we're very privileged to still have the founder of uh, YM Olesen around. So he's a good mm. contact and a good friend. We see him weekly. Mm. And we have actually relationship to every, it's been amazing actually to experience, to have a relationship to every previous space leader and leaders around mm. because they have been sticking around. So yeah. So some of it is, uh, uh, yeah, from the beginning, they wanted to, the vision was to pump out the gold of this region uh, right. and uh, to be a blessing to this region. So that was yeah. one of them. Another one was to be a blessing to, uh, or see like artists really being uh, flourishing in their giftings for God's mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's still happening. And so it was very important for us to honor what has been, but then mm -hmm. ask God, so why are you bringing us here? What what is the elements that we are bringing that can continue with the, the vision? So, yeah. So we have visions that are very old still, but still keeping on uh, doing them, but also uh, some new ones. Right, right, right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, in terms of like just having your vision and getting vision, what would you say would be the discernment? Because I am... It's all about definitions when you say who's a visionary, because we all hear from God and see from God. But then there are clearly certain people that have visionary things floating out of their ears, like they breathe and vision just pops out. Yeah. And we had this conversation, me and Lauren, when we when we discussed the different things. Or like, how do you discern between what is just gifting of when you're visionary, where you just have ideas? Yeah. And how do you discern between like what is something that God is speaking to us as something that's just a really good idea? Because and, and I think it's the question comes from because hearing God is a dynamic thing that we do. It's very rarely just like a, a just a download or something that is hundred percent crystal clear. Might have been in your case, and it happens, but a lot of times it's something more dynamic. And I feel as a leader sometimes like, what is me just stating something that sounds really big and cool, and what is a vision that we're actually holding on to? So what will be your reflections on that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Yes, it is. Um, I think a gift, a uh, visionary is a part of a gift that you get given, or like that you are, it's a gift from God to be a visionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think if you're not a visionary, um, I think, yeah. Um, I think it's important that you surround yourself around people that are visionary to mm. be inspired by them and to be exposed to what it looks like. But uh, um, can you say the question again? I'm just wondering if I'm missing two now. Yeah, like, so how do you discern between what is just a good idea yeah. and what is vision? Because like, if you ask me, because I've been in YWAM long enough that I can tell you what a good vision looks like. Yeah. Nations, young people, many schools, U of N, spheres of society. And then I can just add something to it. And, and it's not like bad necessarily I would come up, but for me at least, maybe I just have what vision is wrong in my head. But for me, vision is something that comes from a much deeper place that yeah. helps us persevere in hard times. Yeah. And, and how to discern the difference between you just having a good idea and it being something that's a vision that we're holding on to that God has spoken. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, it's so true. It's the same for us that it should be, it's happening over time. It's not 
it's very seldom just booming into your head and it's a good idea and you go for it. But right. I think it's a very important key to uh, uh, get confirmation from God about uh, what you have uh, as an idea and not to be independent in it, to be like, we're going to go for this. I got this great vision and idea and we're just going to jump straight into it. I think uh, this happens over a longer period and it's uh, something yeah, to get confirmation uh, mm. from God, yeah, even if it's words or yeah, whatever it is, to it's settled in a way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, let's see. Yeah. I had some notes on it. Mm. Yeah, maybe I could add something that um, I've been reminded like a few few days yeah. ago, like. Uh, I was listening to, um, I think, uh, a video from Lauren Cunningham, you know, so I don't remember if it was uh, something that was a long time ago, but what he says uh, was about the fact that we need, especially in our generation and the generation to come, to to relearn, to, to listen to God and to obey to him. And sometimes we have one big idea and we listen to God and we have just like a general vision and then we go for it. But but we need to 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 spend more time in listening to God and to really ask the details, you know, if he has some details to give to us. And I think in our yeah. generation, because we are so used to to go faster, to have every, to have everything faster, we want to be quick. And so we move forward quickly. <sighs> And um, mm -hmm. and sometimes we we should that's my opinion too like we should not be in a rush and just like really yeah. as you say like get like get a taste of this vision and to let it settle in our heart with details and strategies and then to be able to to step and to really ask God what is the timing to step forward you know yeah yeah. I saw that. I agree. That's uh, some of the things I wrote down. The timing is very key mm -hmm. and to really uh, allow the vision to grow and not jump into it and that it, it can't be an individual thing. We're called for fellowship mm -hmm. to do things together. So we should uh, include other people and mm -hmm. allow them to speak into it and to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very good. That's really good. Because if you're on your own, like, you can't really go f very far, you know. And I really like the fact that sometimes we have just one aspect of the vision and like including everybody into the process would add mm -hmm. some other aspects and make the vision even more bigger and detailed and efficient. Thank yeah. you so much, Randy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, last, year, last year, I was reading an article on um, on on visionaries and visions, it was uh, written by a YMR, a YMR, a YM leader, and he said that we were lacking of visionaries and lacking of vision in YM, you know. And I was wondering if you had some thoughts about it or some input um, to share yeah. with us. Yeah, I think uh, personally, uh, hearing that, I, I, my my whole YWAM journey has actually been around a lot of visionary leaders. So I've been very privileged to uh, be under leadership and work with leaders that are very visionary and yeah, up in that way though. So I find it a little bit hard to uh, yeah, say something about that, that we are less visionary because I've seen a lot of it. Mm. And that also have grown my faith a lot to what we can do because I've seen a lot through other leaders what they are able to paint a picture of and how we actually are moving towards it. So, um, yeah, but um, I think, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's important to make room for people, even though if, if you would be a leader, but you're not naturally um, mm -hmm. a visionary yourself to, uh, we are one, yeah, the body have many parts and it's important mm -hmm. to remember that to be, honest with yourself to see, okay, what is my strengths and to bring in the people that of the strength that you're lacking, maybe to mm -hmm. be holistic in your uh, mission and your work. So yeah, to bring people in that are visionary, if you're not that yourself, yeah. I would do that. Uh, personally, me and Jan, we're both visionary and I, um, 
yeah, to the point that we can sometimes <laughs> want to go, go both quickly and jump. <laughs> uh, mm. But that's so good that we have to recognize to have other people in your team that can hold you back a bit. And uh, uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think it's important to lead with an open hand to lead and include people uh, on the journey. Uh, so you're not just, uh, yeah, uh, running running it on your own and becoming very individualistic. Uh, so, yeah, I think we could, we could probably be uh, always better at being uh, more effective and specific in what we're wanting to achieve and to constantly remind ourselves, what are we, what is the purpose of where we're going? Um, mm. So maybe that could yeah, help where we're a bit more to really believe and know your vision and to uh, breathe it every day in a way. It, a vision shouldn't be something you are just uh, uh, saying once every quarter. You should be something mm. that constantly gets talked about and everybody has mm. to do of their tongue why are we doing what we're doing we need yes. to know why we need to know so we can be motivated and to know where we're heading if not we're just going to be in wilderness <laughs> yeah so, that's the leader's responsibility to share uh, yeah. with the, the team yes so what, what would be some what are some things that you do because i think it's a it's a tough thing it's a tough balance of like f feeding vision enough so people are remembering it but not so much that people are what yeah. do you say, uh, closing their ears uh, towards it mm -hmm. but what will be some what are some stuff that you do in your campus or some things you recommend in terms of keeping the vision on the tip of your tongue we didn't ask this question beforehand so if you need a second to think yeah. that's okay but yeah. what's some, some things that you do in your community that that is helping keeping that vision fresh for people? um so even though I say these things that I say doesn't mean that we are full of where we know it all and we are right, right, right. Because yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely like a continually process for us as well. But yeah. um, we have felt to be very inclusive in our leadership mm. to everyone at the staff and to, yeah, to everyone. So even just this, uh, it was this fall, we had a, a lot of focus on staff training and full weeks with staff training and vision casting. And uh, yeah. we had some new um, staff coming and to include them and bring them on the journey quick of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we saw that was very fruitful and very bonding to know that everybody, you know, or at least with, I feel like it helped a lot to see, they know what their what the focus is and where we're heading. Yeah, but We're still working on it to remind and explain, but, <clears throat> It's more that we live it, that we should, yeah, me and Jan, we focus a lot on like how we self walk it instead of always just talk about it. <clears throat> oh, that's good. Yeah. It could be, both is important, but to um, to really live out our vision in the way we lead. Um, mm -hmm. So some can be not so clear to people always, but the more they yeah. hang around, maybe it will become clear. But yeah. then we want to focus on regular uh, trainings and uh, sharing about it. But I've seen like in Townsville, I saw they were very good at this because um, in the staff training or in the staff meetings, the leaders constantly shared why. Why do we do what we do? Mm -hmm. um, and also um, they had very, they had actually written their vision because uh, the vision should be just short, a statement almost like, yeah. Sentence. Yeah. So they just wrote it on the wall when you come into the entrance and in the office yeah. it's written. So in a way that inspires you and the pictures yeah. of what they want to, like who they want to um, serve and what they want to do are all around the base. And I loved mm -hmm. it because I was constantly inspired because I looked at these pictures and some of it was like, there's this boat that he was saying that we would get one day and was like, seriously, is that ever going to happen? And it happened mm. when I was there. So it was amazing to see how he used pictures, he used videos, he used words to make it visually. So I think a combination of visually talking about it, but okay. um, also walk it. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. Yeah. I think about it too, like just hearing you speak, something that, that cost me in terms of just like, 
vision is almost like it's it's to help reprogram your heart to set your heart on God's heart basically yeah. and it's because we all have levels of unfa- unbelief whatever you want to call it or just realistic do you see what I'm saying and I think vision mm-hmm. is is the, the slow dropping dripping particularly with the bold thing that I first you say it's impossible but then you see it you see it happening because your your heart is also softened towards it because it's been spoken about uh, the whole time yeah so it's really it's good true. Yeah. So, just talking about vision and and sharing it and living with it and stuff. Any any, because it's different seeing others people do it and being in it and then taking on a campus yourself. Any reflections on things that you learn you have learned in this life? If you if I was taking on a campus today, mm-hmm. and we were talk we having a conversation about vision, what would you tell me? Like this is something that I learned from my first year that you really need to to think about that I experienced myself. When it comes to vision, yes. Um, uh, yeah, I let's see. Can you phrase it again? I'm not sure if I told, like if. Yeah. So from just your experience of coming to Olesund, yeah. Uh, what would be one thing that like this is something? that I realized this was harder than I thought it was, or yeah. I would have done this differently. Yeah, I think, yes, I would have uh, uh, t- mm. used more time to um, connect with the leaders and understand a bit more earlier on uh, what has been there in the past. And yeah, mm. and not, because uh, I'm naturally somebody that, um, it's a bit too, uh, quick on the trigger. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think to um, go a bit slower paced and yeah. focus on relationship yeah. building more than figure out how do we uh, start this now in my job right. here and yeah, all that to yeah. be relational because we are, uh, yeah, we're, it, when it comes down to it all, we are called for a relationship and to honor yeah, one another yeah. and to uh, listen and hear and respect mm-hmm. and I think I would have used way more time for relationship building, not always talking about uh, the base and where we're heading, right. or but also just hearing more about, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, I wish I did that. <laughs> yeah. What would what what does a bit more time look like for a visionary? Because I know the timeline sometimes looks different for different people. Yeah. So we were there. Yeah. What. Not fully sure, but I think we moved quickly into things uh, in a couple right. of uh, weeks, months. It was very quick right, right, right. when we yeah. started um, moving forward in a way, because both of me and Jan are like that. Um, yeah. That can be our strength and our weakness when it comes to this. So, yeah, um, yeah just to uh, spend more time with people over the first year, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. I think I think I can see it's hard to say an exact, but it's more like you know, we're talking three months, six months, yeah. a year. So, but yeah, maybe over the first year to just focusing on establishing relationships. Because yeah. for me, Anion, not having any, we haven't been DTS students here, staff or anything. We just came and we're invited into become the base leaders. So it was an interesting position to take when you don't have relationship because relationship is key. And yeah. Yeah, I think I just wasn't prepared how mm. important that was in a way. Because mm. if you have a relationship, you also have trust straight away and you can easily make changes and do things. Uh, but if you don't have that, things can be quicker misunderstood and things like that. So I wish yeah, I was focusing good. more on the relationship and then yes. to build trust and to not, yeah, to take it a bit slower so people can yeah, catch on <laughs> or like it. very good. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a word that needs to be what he said over and over again, because we do get why we miss vision, right? Like that's, that's our main DNA and almost the main gift that we would not value over other gifts, but we would definitely talk about it a lot. Yeah. And it does, things do tend to go quick when you, yeah. it's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. So good. So and good. I think it's, uh, it's really, really event what you say, because Arsun does really, uh, uh, as also a big inheritance, you know, and if you want to respect mm-hmm. that and to really take the most of it, you need time to really understand mm-hmm. the the history 
of the base and in the city and the community and everything that has been done before. So you can really build from there and not start everything from scratch. I mean, yeah. there's a, a treasure in that, you know, like sometimes when we take over the leadership, we just want to have our vision and to keep going. And yeah. But but we lose time, you know, because we, we have a treasure. We have like the past and what the leaders have done before us and and all the team has mm -hmm. done things before us and, and we can build from there, you know, and go even beyond. So that's uh, yeah. that's really precious what you say. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I really liked in, in the bio you sent us, you said that you want the base to be a blessing to the city. Yeah. and that you are involved in different local ministries such as youth work and we were wondering like how can connection with the local ministry um can have a, a good impact on YM mobilizations yeah um that's something that is very much of the inheritance of the base here that has they have been locally reaching out a lot and uh, we that's something we just continued have to do so that's something we've seen a, a great fruit of for many years here uh, before we came but i think yeah when i read that question first my first thing that came to me was like it's so important to work f from your heart and not focus on just the numbers and mobilize, uh, mm. mobilizing people to come to you mm. but um, so if you have to focus on yeah, that your staff, that they actually uh, love what they do and they are healthy and well and we are enjoying what we're doing. We believe in what we're doing. We believe oh, that recruiting to a DTS is actually a transforming experience for a person. Um, it really was that for me. Like words can't explain what God have done to my heart and to give me a new heart and give me a new mm. I, i'm a new person my parents are like i can see you're a new person <laughs> so yeah. uh, i really at both me and Jan, we really believe what a dts can do to a person so it's something that is very fun to uh, invite people to and include people into and even just a ym uh, community like i see the value of that especially now with covid um people are more lonely and um mm. yeah it's just way more has been a lot of isolation so to be able to invite people to worship nights to family dinners to mm. uh, different projects and things that we do it's been so amazing to see and uh, yeah that locals are so wanting more of this and we are we're sitting on gold and we shouldn't keep it for ourselves we should give it to the local communities because mm. there's a lot that are lacking around of leaders to lead this or to join youth groups or to just and we are naturally doing a lot of these things just because it's a dts running and yeah mm. we're focusing on local outreaches but yeah so i think working from your heart Mm. and not focusing on the numbers of course they are important or like yeah, yeah. focusing on it but it's not that that can't be your driving force it should be mm. a hard to want to see the people that you meet like when we do youth groups i really truly want to see this youth uh, know that it's amazing to have jesus as lord yeah. and you want to experience that because that's changed my life so with that in my mind it becomes really fun to want to engage with them and include them and invite them in. Uh, yeah. And it's been, yeah, we, I can't say we have uh, the most uh, people in, sorry. We don't no, have sorry. the most Norwegians actually still in our DTSs, but the youth work that we have, um, that we are doing is all Norwegians. And uh, mm -hmm. there's a person on the opposite side of the street that we also engage in. So they're all Norwegians. So there's been amazing to use our international community to, to reach out to people. But um, mm -hmm. all comes very, so, like, I feel like most of the things that we're doing is coming from invitation by people and asking, we are in need of this. Can you come and serve and help? And we have prayed about it and we felt, yeah, mm -hmm. we should, we want to serve our local community so i feel like god have just brought a lot of this to us and we are just he's spoken a lot about being faithful uh, in the small and 
the one mm -hmm. and to actually like we started with a youth group where just a one or two people joined but now there's yeah. 30 35 people so mm -hmm. yeah to not count like we're going to get the most out of this and but what is yeah to make sure the fruit becomes healthy for the people and yeah, yeah. yeah. so i, I yeah <laughs> That was yeah, like I showed that, but yeah. No, that's great. I th I think like what I can hear from what you say that 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 you care for people. I mean, like and if you care for people, they will trust in you, you know. And it's focusing on the quality more than on numbers, you know. And like yeah, we're talking about people, we're talking about needs, and I really mm -hmm. like the fact that you're open to new opportunities that you haven't chosen, but opportunities that people are coming and ask you you know like they, they they made some request and then you say okay let's let's pray about it and see what god says so mm -hmm. there's that this space of availability you know like to to even change your agenda i guess if you if you have mm -hmm. like people asking you um new things that you were not uh, doing before but you're ready to do it you know if god says yes so i think it's really really powerful you know <laughs> And and you talked about the DTSCs, and I was wondering, like, with the COVID context, uh, how did it go for you guys? Like, did you have uh, many students, and how, like, how many DTSCs you have right now? Yeah, I feel like this season with COVID has been strangely uh, fruitful. <laughs> yeah. We don't always understand why, to because. <laughs> Uh, we've seen, of course, more Europeans coming, but just before COVID, we had around 12 students on our DTSs. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was within all the tracks that we have. And that's six of them. So it was not a lot, but then COVID happened. Uh, but then we've had around, we had 32 students last year and 35 is currently on the DTS now. Wow, and we just are getting a lot of interest and leads. And we had to actually say, um, that that was enough for now so we couldn't even take in all of the ones that we that applied this um, in january now because of covid and yeah keeping some distance mm. so it's just been an very yeah it's been amazing to see um how how it's grown in the middle of the pandemic i think maybe one thing that has uh, it helps to have people that love to do or like they love uh, what they do so for example mm -hmm. our media team and our uh, social media with facebook and instagram and being very youthful and active there personally yeah i'm not old but i can't write the the right things there to make people want to come to us i need to give that to the ones that are that age <laughs> so <laughs> this thing that they are so on it and they share like genuine uh, I mean, not genuine, but like the, just the reality of what's happening here. They are, I think that's helps a lot that people see live things that are happening, that they see, okay, what is this space? It's not something that was updated just three months ago, but something happens all the time and it gets yeah. uh, online because young people now, they're fast and quick and they want new things and they want to see, okay, how is it actually? And not just paint the perfect picture of your base, but uh the silly and the fun and the serious and yeah all of it so we've been very blessed to have people that love to do that they love to mm -hmm. share on social media and instagram and yeah so we get a lot of leads from that and we yeah. take care of them and we contact them of interests uh, to come mm. Mm. so tell me a bit more about it because you say leads and you say contact them you're saying like oh that's obvious we all do that uh, but what's, what does that look like when, when you get leads? Like, yeah. do you have a team that, that calls yeah. up? How many do you call? Was that something you did prior to COVID or that's something that you applied now? And like, Yeah, um, that's something. Uh, so when people are, for example, saying they're just interested, you can just click a button on our webpage or Instagram that you're interested to... Uh, uh, know more about us and uh, we uh, write down that name and we get in contact with them so we have we always we or we don't always but we have the last year and a half called people so instead of uh, just emailing because then you quicker can get a relational conversation and 
get yeah it's just i see even for myself i came on my dts because people called me and explained stuff on the phone or now we're so privileged that it's very easy to do facetime so we facetime or video call everyone that are interested as staff and students and so you can get to know each other a little bit and see a face <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Mm. so i feel like that's important but too yeah like we had to it was actually my husband doing this but it was we had to invest some money into knowing and following all our leads but then uh, actually getting back to them quickly when they're interested and not like a week ahead or a month ahead but trying to um uh, come back to them straight away um it was for my husband too he was like he he showed interest in the ship uh, in 2014 and he actually just prayed on his own and said if they answer me within 24 hours i'm gonna take this job if not I, it's probably not the right thing and i'm just gonna leave it mm -hmm. and the, the current uh, captain he called him up I think it was less than 12 hours to say, yes, we want you to come. And mm -hmm. it's to honor people and honor people's time and yeah, to be on this. We don't find this easy because we don't have a big media team in that sense. Um, but um, to yeah, in between the staff, the uh, DTS leaders and uh, myself and Jan, we <laughs> um, share the load of the people and uh, try to get in contact with them as soon as they contact us, mm -hmm. basically. Because we, we we both felt that that happened so much to ourselves, how important it is to get a quick uh, response. Yeah. yeah, that's great. <laughs> do you have any, do you have any, what does it look like for the fall if you're going to run a DTS? Yeah, so we're running the first one now that we because before we came we had nine month schools, uh, but we did an av evaluation on that and saw that it was pretty full on for the staff to do that. So we changed it to be six month schools instead, mm -hmm. and uh, now we're gonna do the first one or like first year with two schools in a year. Right, right. So that's gonna be in the fall in September. Uh, it's already, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's already a couple. Yeah, I think we're around. I think I don't know if it's more than seven or eight now that I've applied, mm. but um, yeah, we're planning to run the same uh, tracks with um, photo, barista, fine art, and dance, music, and outdoor. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I feel I feel old when you're talking because I remember when I had to apply to my DTS, I sent. Uh, you know, papers and via post, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> Crazy time. <laughs> I think it's just important to highlight the the, the principle of, of calling because I know other campuses that have applied the same principle. I know YWAM Louisville in America, they've almost tripled the amount of students that they have because they just apply the principle of, of quick contact and calling to yeah. not just that it that it is a personal phone call to just create that connection. Yeah. So that is, is really cool. And That's the nice great. thing about it now, it's not like we're using a lot of extra money on it because we always use the Wi-Fi. So it's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. And um, we look at the different giftings that people have. Some are not so comfortable doing the phone calls, then they're focusing more on the emails. But the yeah. ones that are like, oh, emails are the most boring thing. I just want to talk to you. Then you just give it to them. So just look at the giftings people have and uh, let them work in their strengths. Uh, we see that was very fruitful when we just changed it up a little bit about who did what. <laughs> yes. I personally, I would much rather just talk, just do a phone call than sit there and read this long list of email. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. What would be some, if you're just talking about mobilization, because that's basically, that's a type of mobilization to, to get people going. Um, are there any other initiatives that you guys are doing in terms of mobilizing and, and you know, getting people into missions and stuff that you see is, is helpful or working? That was also not in the list of questions that we sent necessarily. So yeah. at the moment, feel free. Uh, not necessarily towards our DTSs, but um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> since... No, just in general, just anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in Olesund, this is the maritime um, 
city and there's a lot of maritimes and healthcare workers here and mm. it's so it's a part of our vision and our passion and both of us me and Jan have that in our heart to see Norwegians um, uh, join missions and actually use their to use their professional uh, yeah backgrounds to serve others so mm. we um we, this is something we just have started with is to open up a, a ship's office at the base where people can come and sign up to go on mission trips to Papua New Guinea. And oh, wow. that's short term mission trips. So you can come and join as a nurse or as a, even as a, a volunteer that want to work in the kitchen or in, mm. uh, in housekeeping mm. or even doing teaching. But yeah, yeah, maritimes, I can come and join short term, but also long term. So, uh, for we see this is a huge uh, opportunity to let um, Norwegians that are in like no uh, full time even if they're not Norwegians but like that are full time in work but they really have a heart for missions but I don't know how that's gonna look like with family and yeah full time work and a loan and everything uh, but that this gives them an opportunity to be exposed to it and I've seen many people deciding to stay on and. Even, yeah, I'm very driven by what it does to them in their life to be able to, mm. they think they're going to just come there and give of their service, but they get mm. rich and blessed back by meeting the locals and seeing um, their faith and being on a medical ship that is filled with Jesus. Uh, you can mm. come there as a non-Christian and come and work on the boat. And um, we've had, mm. I, I've seen like professors coming that are, uh, worked in the highest rank in the, as doctors and mm -hmm. then I'm supposed to be their leader little me a girl uh, <laughs> when I was still a girl for many and then so it was just very twisted the way we do leadership in YWAM and it was amazing to see the, them soften and experience that it's not about hierarchy and but it's about mm -hmm. serving a people that really needs the help but also we get so extremely blessed by understanding that they have Jesus, but they need medicine and we can give and take from, or we can get from one another. So it's really a blessed to be a blessing joining mm. that. So we really believe and hope and dream to one day have our own ship that we can send out from Norway because we are in Olesen and this is a place where they build ships and there's so mm. many medical people here. Yeah. We have, the people are around and they're lacking purpose. They're lacking what to do with themselves. And I feel like it's our responsibility that we know that there's an opportunity for them to give them that mm. opportunity, invite them yeah. Yeah. to say, hey, there's something you can be a part of that is way bigger than yourself. And it's so uh, worth it <laughs> yeah, to yeah. let go. And yeah, so we, yeah, I really look forward. That's one of the things I look forward to, to see in the future. It's way bigger mm. than ourselves than I know it. That's from God when it's much bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Maybe you need a picture of a of a ship that it's impossible to get yeah. put yes. on the wall. Yes, true. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so you say that it was open to non Christian volunteers too. And so, how do you yeah. communicate uh, this uh, opportunity to uh, to the non Christian? Because I guess on the ship there will be like meetings and prayer times yeah. and yeah. yeah. So everyone that. Um, so usually how we recruit in Norway is that we would do like a conference, uh, for example, um, inviting people that want to go and work. Because many people uh, know um, mercy ships, uh, even though mm -hmm. yeah, I know that, that that's something they can be engaged in. And we see a lot of people wanting to do that. So we say we are very clear in saying we're a Christian ship and we're a Christian uh, the leadership are Christian, that you can come and you can serve regardless of your faith and background. And we see that as an importance to have a, because we don't see the boat just to be a serving boat for the locals, but there's a mission field just for us on the boat as well afterward yeah. to meet the doctors and the midwives and the, yeah, the volunteer that are just coming from Greece for two weeks uh, for them to meet Jesus. So. There's yeah. always optional uh, prayer time, the optional worship. But when you are in a boat and you're stuck there and you can't go off, people always <laughs> come to what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, it just happens naturally on its own. 
that people are joining stuff. It's always this a uh, 120. It's just a couple of a handful of people that are not joining. So, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. It's yeah. yeah, so cool. So oh, one yeah. one tip you would say like to recruit people is like to get them stuck in a boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Boats are great. Just, there's yeah. nowhere to. Once you're out there, you're out there. That's yeah. a strategy. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah. if you come on the boat, you know that we are Christians. So then, if you're a non-Christian, you're open and okay to work with uh, Christians. And but you know that we say that if. The patients want to have prayer when you meet them because very often they do that in Papua New Guinea. They were actually expecting it. Then we mm -hmm. just tell them that if you're not the praying type, you just tell us that are leading the team so we can come and pray for your patient because we really mm -hmm. value that and we want to do that. And some are actually coming just to be prayed for and not because they're sick. So then mm -hmm. we just, uh, and yeah, because they knew that they came and decided to come on a Christian ship, it's usually mm -hmm. fine. Mm. Wow, that's so, so cool. good to hear. I like that. Mm. Yeah, the the time is going really fast. So um, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's there's two questions that we are used to ask to each speaker on this leadership lounge, and one of them is uh, um, to share a significant uh, mistake uh, in ministry that we all can learn from because we all made mistakes and. I think it feels good to hear the mistakes of uh, one another yeah. because it's encouraging to to just to see that it happens to everybody and and we can all learn from that. So maybe you could yeah. share one with us. Yeah, I think the one that I actually touched on earlier was one of the things I have yeah regretted the most coming to Olusun was to uh, not to go too fast. Mm. And so people, uh, I didn't even know that I hurt people and um, that I was making it difficult for some stuff because uh, I was just uh, making decisions too quick and moving too quick forward than instead of taking the time and bringing them with me. So, yeah, I really regret that to have focused on the people and the relationships mm -hmm. and to include them on the journey. It's so good. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So yes. learning to go a bit slower, learning to, yeah, it's not always, a, it's definitely not a strength always to want to be quick and just move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love change. I love, like my, per I would love to just every day to look different and to like, oh, I have an opportunity. I want to jump yeah. into it. But that's not for everyone. And to be more sensitive to that we are different and to meet people yeah. where they are. Uh, I wish I would do that more. Mm. I think I heard I'm, because it's a common thing, not just in my mind, but everywhere. And I, I read a book, and they used very good language. They talked about you need to always um, leverage. That sounds very technical, but like leverage your, your relational capital with people. So yeah. you can only do as much as you you have relational capital to do it. You need to yeah. use that, and you only increase that capital by spending time and, and listening and, and all these things. Mm. That's, that's really cool. That's so good. Yeah. So we, in a way, th there was a period now on DTS, now on the, in this COVID time where we couldn't have a school. So we had a six months without school and I could just see the fruit of that, of taking time mm. and having, we had a we even had a, um, we closed down the base and went on outreach, just the staff, because we didn't have students to focus on outward focus stuff here in Norway. And it was amazing because then we just did full on like a DTS outreach in Norway where we mm -hmm. lived together, the the fun and the challenges and everything with it. And it was so good for that purpose of building unity, trust, relationships. And now it's just a different flow that are happening uh, amongst the staff group because I think that time really did something. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, uh, yeah, good. COVID was a blessing to yeah, yeah, yeah. teams and each other. Mm. So, but I'm still, that's something I still is working on to go a bit slower and to not just, uh, yeah, run with the task and not, uh, just stop and see the individual in front of you. Mm. 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 Thank you, Randy. Um, 
And the, the second question that we all used to ask is, uh, is, is there any books that uh, have influenced you and you would like to recommend us? Uh, yeah. Books that you read like a few months ago, a few days ago that re you really like? And... I think one, or you probably heard about it, the, the book of Darlene, uh, The Values Matter. Mm -hmm. If you are in YWAM, mm -hmm. I highly recommend to read it. I actually that was the only book I didn't have here with me, but it was amazing to read about mm -hmm. um, that when Darlene comes to basis and um, she asks about seeing people's guidelines and uh, want to understand why they have the guidelines they have, that they mm -hmm. have to be paired up for a biblical perspective and not just because somebody did something wrong and now you have a rule. <laughs> And I just love that she just goes back to, yeah, what is the Bible saying? How do you create uh, yeah, guidelines and values? But in general, he, she went through all our uh, values, and we have some amazing values that is a part of YWAM. And so I love that book. So we made it a – we bought it for Christmas for every staff, so they have to read it and <laughs> live it. So, yeah, that's something we recommend to all our staff to read. Um, but another book that I, both me and Jan, we love, it's Christian Heroes. <laughs> mm. I don't, this is in Norwegian though, but honestly, when days can be full on with work and you're constantly doing very good, yeah, teaching different things you're doing as a leader, I love mm. just reading these type of books because they're an extremely uh, faith building books that are, um, yeah, just really making you believe that the impossible is possible. And these yes. missionaries have been in th through the most incredible things and actually puts my life into perspective to be like, okay, yeah. I think I'm actually doing pretty good and I should actually put myself more out there um, and to be, uh, allow myself to be stretched more because that's when I get into the most incredible things with God. So they are incredibly inspiring and they're just like a read overnight or like a evening. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, last book uh, I have. Is it okay that I have another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do one more. That's good. Yeah. So resilience, healthy life, perform better, with uh, mm. Paul Dunders. So uh, this has been an amazing book that uh, I read through a leadership training that we did here in Norway about just learning how to handle challenges and unexpected setbacks and difficulties in leadership, uh, but just to not burn out, basically. So wow. I learned a lot of amazing things through this book. Of uh, What are the things you can do and very practical so you don't burn out? Because uh, it's really sad to see so many uh, in ministry to burn out so quick and people are very yeah. young and burn out so quick. And I don't yeah. think that needs to be the case but if we would be more intentional about caring knowing how to really balance our lives and to become more resilient um i think we could be way have seen way more people staying in missions yeah. and or in whatever so they do so amazing amazing that's mm. good that is wonderful thank you so much thank you for the books and thank you for spending time with us it's been so good it's always inspiring. And I think we all need to hear that despite a world pandemic, things can still grow and we can still move forward. And I think we all need it uh, in the season as we're moving out of COVID. Cross my fingers. Hallelujah. Pray that it's true. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, just focusing on mobilization and vision and, and growing uh, further um, with our ministries. It's good. Yes, my son is picking him in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much. Let me just pray for you uh, as an ending and bless you in you and your husband and your, your campus. Thank so, you. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for Randy uh, and thank you for the ministry and the work that she's doing. And I just pray for her relationship with you. I just pray for a continuous growth in her intimacy with you, Jesus, because it's mm -hmm. from the intimacy and it's from that overflow that we lead our lives and from there where we affect people and it's from there we lead people and it's from there we get vision and it's from there we mobilize. And it all stems from the place of intimacy with you. So I just pray a blessing mm -hmm. over there. Pray a blessing over there. Campus and in the time they're in, we just pray for fruitful, healthy multiplication in the things that they're doing 
Um, and just an extra blessing of this this ministry with where they bring non-Christians on the boat and go out. Just pray for your blessing over that too and for an increase of that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Yes, bless you. And thank you, everyone that's been watching. Bless you all. And see you guys around on a conference somewhere. Mm -hmm.